Welcome to this YSL DAX4 Power BI tutorial. In this part of the series, we're going to cover how to use quick measures. We'll start by showing you how to create quick measures and then explain how you can edit them. And then to give you an idea of the range of different things quick measures can do, we'll see examples to do with dates, how to create running totals, and also how to create quick measures using text. So let's get started. To get started, I've imported some data from a simplified version of the Movies Workbook we've used in several previous videos in this series. I'll drop a link in the video description so you can download and use this file yourself. And once you've imported all the data from it, you'll end up with two tables, one called Movies containing all the data, and an almost empty table called All Measures, which we'll add our measures to shortly. The first thing I'm going to do in the report is create a table visual, which is going to show a list of the film genres, alongside the average runtime. So I'll add those two fields to the table, and then I'll change the aggregate of runtime to an average rather than a sum. I'll just spend a tiny bit of time just changing the formatting of this to make it a little more readable. So in the format pane, let's head to the value section, and let's increase the font size up to say 13. And that should be good enough. Next, I'd like to create two measures, one that shows the average runtime of films which didn't win any Oscars, and another to show the average runtime of films which did win Oscars. Now these aren't particularly difficult measures to create, but if you're just not sure where to get started, or you just can't be bothered writing them out yourself, you can create quick measures to do this sort of thing for you. Let's right click on the All Measures table and choose to create a new quick measure. In the dialog box that appears, you can then choose the calculation you want to base your measure on. I'm going to select the filtered value option. Then Depending on the value you've selected from the calculation drop-down list, you'll have to fill in a variety of other boxes. So here we're going to add the base value, which is going to be the runtime field. So from the movies table on the right-hand side, we can drag the runtime field into the base value box. It defaults to a sum of runtime again, but we can change that to an average fairly easily. Then we can add another field that we can use to apply filters. So this time we'll go with the Oscar wins field. And then once we add that in, we get another drop-down list populated with the values of that column. So I can click on the drop-down arrow there. And I'm going to create this first measure to show the average runtime of films with zero Oscar wins. You can select multiple options here by holding down the control key and clicking on other boxes, but I just want the one for zero. Once we've done that, we can click OK, and our new quick measure will be added to the all measures table. At this point, we can delete the delete this column column. So let's right click on that and choose to delete it from the model. And that'll convert our table into a proper measures table. So we can see the symbol changes there. At this point, you can use your quick measure just like any other measure you've created. Let's drag it into the table visual so we can see the results it produces first. Then you'll probably spot a few basic things you might like to change. For instance, the formatting to display decimal places, and maybe the measure name as well to make it more readable. To do that, just like with any other measure, you can select it in the fields list, and then we can change the number of decimal places. Let's go for two. If you want to change the name of the measure, then you can edit the code that's been generated for us. Let's just zoom in to make that a little easier to read. So I'll change the measure name so it's called something like Average Runtime Losers. So it'll be a little bit more insulting with our measure names. If there's anything you want to change about the way the code has been uh, laid out to make it a bit more readable, then you can do that too. This is not a particularly complicated measure. We may have done something similar to this in previous videos in the series. So you'll probably recognize the average function, maybe the calculate function, and this basic filter that's been applied here. So where the Oscar wins is in this list of numbers. I'm just gonna change the layout of my code to make it suit my preferences. So I'll put calculate on its own line, the average function on its own separate line, and then the filter on its own line, and finally close that set of round brackets on a separate line. I don't need to change this, but I think this part, the filter itself, is a little more complicated than it needs to be. The reason the in operator is used is in case we selected more than one value. But as we've only chosen one, we can simplify this by saying equals zero rather than in zero. So having done all that, we can confirm our changes and we'll see that those changes have been reflected with the column name and the formatting of the measure. Um, and it hasn't changed the results, of course, the filter still works in the same way. We've just simplified the code a little bit. 
you can use the code generated by a quick measure to quickly create other similar measures. Let's use our average runtime losers measure to quickly generate one for the average runtime of winners. If we select the measure, we can then copy all the code from the formula bar, and then we can create another new measure, so just a standard measure this time rather than a quick measure, and then paste all this code in. We can modify the name so that it's called average runtime winners, and then change our filter so that it finds all the films with an Oscar win of greater than zero, or greater than or equal to one if you prefer. Having done that, we can just update that new measure and then we can add that in to our table visual. And we'll see that we get a similar result but with a different filter using our quick measure as the base. You can refer to an existing quick measure in new quick measures that you create. For the next example, I want to compare the two measures we've already created by subtracting the value for losers from the value for winners. That's a fairly simple measure to create and write out ourselves, but there's also a quick measure option to create it for us as well. So let's right click the all measures table and choose to create a new quick measure. For the calculation this time, we're going to scroll down to the mathematical operations section and choose the subtraction option. So what we have to do here is refer to two fields. Now we can refer to fields in the movies table, but we can also refer to measures that we've created. So I'm going to go with the average runtime winners in the base value and then subtract the average runtime losers. We can then click OK and now a new measure will be created. Just to show you the results, if I select it first, that's the basic calculation. We could easily have written that out ourselves. Um, maybe the title's a little long-winded. Um, let's maybe change this to say average runtime winners versus losers. Make it a little easier to read. Then we can simply add that into our table visual. And there's our end result. Sometimes a quick measure will need a little more work to get exactly the results you want. So you can see here some of our film genres didn't contain any Oscar winning films, so they have a blank for the average runtime winners. That blank has been treated as a zero for the new measure we've created, so we end up with some results which don't really make much sense. I prefer to replace these with blanks. So let's head back to the measure we've just created and we can modify the code in the formula bar. Let's add an if function. And then I want to check if the average runtime winners measure is blank. You'll remember how to do this if you've watched previous videos in the series. So let's just do this fairly quickly. And then if that's true, we'll produce a blank in the result. Otherwise, we'll produce the result of the subtraction that we've already created. So that's the entire measure now created. So if is blank average runtime winners, produce a blank, otherwise subtract average runtime losers from average runtime winners. Now we can update that measure and we should see that those incorrect values get replaced with blanks in the final result. The quick measures we've used so far have been fairly simple and probably haven't saved us that much time. But quick measures can become more complicated as we're about to see. For the next example, I want to show the average runtime for each genre as a percentage difference from the average runtime of science fiction films. Let's start by adding a new quick measure to the all measures table. This time I'll select a calculation from the filters category called percentage difference from filtered value. The base value will be the same average runtime that we've used previously. So we can add that in and then change the sum to an average. This measure has an option to control what happens with blanks, so if there were any blank average runtimes, we can produce blanks in the output, so we don't have to add that if statement in ourselves later on. For the filter, I'm going to add the genre field, and then select the science fiction genre from the list. And then we can click OK, and then add our new measure to the table visual to see the results. It's perhaps nicer to see this as a set of data bars rather than as a number. So let's right click on the average of runtime percentage in the, uh, in the field well. Choose conditional formatting and choose data bars. And then we're just going to change the formatting of negative bars so that they're in orange rather than in blue. And then we can click OK and see how each genre compares to the runtime of science fiction films. The interesting thing about this measure isn't particularly the result it produces, but it's in the way that the calculation is performed. 
If we select the measure on the right hand side in the fields list, we can see that this measure has used variables to break the long calculation into separate discrete steps. And you may remember us using variables in a previous video. The convention for quick measures is to precede all variable names with a double underscore character. I'm not a particularly big fan of that style myself, um, but you're of course very welcome to change that if you want to just by editing the code in the same way we've done so far. And here's our if statement to control what happens if there was a blank in the average runtime. Next, let's look at another more complicated quick measure, this time to do with date time values. I'm going to start by adding a new page to the report. And in there, I'm going to add a line chart, which I want to display the average budget by year. So from my release date field in the movies table, I'm going to expand that to find the year field in the date hierarchy. We can then place that in the axis bucket. And then we can drag the budget field into the values bucket and change that from a sum to an average. Now I want to add a quick measure that shows the percentage change in average budget year by year. To do that, we can right click the all measures table, choose new quick measure, and then for the calculation, we can scroll down to the time intelligence section. Now there are several useful sounding measures we can create in here. The one we're gonna go with is year over year change. The base value is going to be the average budget, so we can do that fairly quickly and easily. The date must be a field containing an entire date. Now I know we're calculating the difference year by year and we're displaying the years in the chart, but we can't just add the year field from the date hierarchy into the date box here. It asks for a date and the value you provide must be a date value. So I'm gonna drag the release date field into the date bucket. Then we can change the number of periods if we wanted to. So for example, if we wanted the value for each year to show the percentage change from 10 years ago, we could add the number 10 there. But I want each year to show the percentage change from the previous year, so we'll leave that set to one. Having done that, we can click OK. And then with our new measure that's just been created, average of budget, we can add that to the secondary values bucket of the line chart to show the results. If we want to see how that measure is working, once again, we can select it in the fields list on the right hand side. And this is a somewhat more complex measure than the ones we've seen so far. Not quite as intuitive to create ourselves if we were trying to write this from scratch. But there are some things you'll recognize here. So there's an if function, which is adding a little bit of error handling to our quick measure. The bit you will recognize, I hope, is in the third argument of the if function. We're seeing a variable declared there to calculate the value of the previous year using the calculate and average functions. And then the filter is being provided by the date add function, subtracting one year from the release date. We're then returning the division of the average budget for the current year minus the value of the previous year divided by the value of the previous year to get the percentage change. So that bit itself isn't particularly complicated. The thing that makes it look complicated, I think, is the if statement that checks if we filtered the results by the movie's release date, we get an error message produced. So this error function in DAX allows you to produce custom error messages. Just to show you where that might appear, if I try to change the way my chart works so that rather than showing by year, I'm showing on the axis the entire date. Let's select the chart and then I'm going to change the release date from the date hierarchy to the release date field. At this point, the entire visual breaks, can't display the visual. If we click the see details link, we'll see the error message that's produced by the, um, by the error function in the quick measure. So I'm gonna close that message down and then change the axis back to showing a date hierarchy. And then we'll just get rid of the day, month and quarter, which we don't need. We're interested in seeing the year on year change. Date and time fields in your data model aren't restricted to the time intelligence category of quick measures. You can reference them in some other quick measures as well. To demonstrate that, let's add a new page to the report. And then on this page, I'm going to add in a line and clustered column chart. 
I want to use this to show the Oscar wins by date. So I'm going to drag the release date field into the shared axis bucket. Rather than the date hierarchy, I want to show the release date field this time. So let's change that. And then add the Oscar wins to the column values. Now I want to create a quick measure that shows the running total of Oscar wins. Let's right click the All Measures table, choose New Quick Measure, and then from the Calculation drop down list, we'll scroll down to the Totals category and choose the running total. The base value is going to be the sum of Oscar wins, and the field is going to be our release date. So we'll accumulate the sum of Oscar wins over the values of the release date field. And we'll do this in ascending order. If we click OK, we can then simply add this new field to the line values area of our chart. So we'll see the running total of Oscars won by all the films ending at the, the sum of Oscars for the entire table. If we have a look at the code that's being used to generate this quick measure, we can see that it's not particularly complicated, at least not compared to the previous two quick measures we've created using variables. The complicated part of this one is the filter that's being applied in the calculate function. These are functions you may not be familiar with. We will cover these in later parts of the series, of course. And I think at least, if nothing else, the quick measure certainly saves time in writing all that out. We've used all of the measures we've created so far to set the values of visuals in the report, but we can also use measures to set descriptive text, such as, for example, the title of a visual. To demonstrate that, I'm going to change my report page so I've got enough space to insert a slicer. So I'll add a slicer to that page and I'm going to assign the genre field to it. Now this allows me to filter the visuals on the page to only show, in this case, in the chart, the total Oscars won by the genres I've selected. What I'd also like to be able to do is take the list of genre names I've selected and display those in the title of the chart. So to do that, let's first of all just clear the filters I've added to the slicer. Then I'm going to right click all measures and choose new quick measure. From the calculation list, we can scroll all the way to the bottom to the text category, and I'm going to choose the concatenated list of values. We need to assign a field whose values will concatenate, so I'll drag the genre field into there. And then we can choose how many of those values we display in full before the list will be truncated. So if I select currently more than three genres, the list that's generated will show the names of the first three, followed by the word etc. I'm going to increase that up to five, so I'll see at least the names of the first five genres I select, then etc. if I select more than that. I can click OK, and then the measure that I've just created also gets selected automatically in the All Measures table. And you can see how complicated this is in terms of the amount of code. This is certainly not something I would want to write myself from scratch necessarily. So here the quick measure definitely saves us time. Having created the measure, what we're then going to do is assign that to the title of our chart. So I can select the chart and then enter the Format pane and then find in the general section, the title properties. I can expand that. We've already got the title switched on. So I just want to replace the existing text with a reference to our measure. So I can hit the FX button there to launch this dialog box. We'll use a field value. And then from the drop down list in our all measures table, you can see quite helpfully it greys out or ghosts all the ones that aren't applicable to the title. So the only one I can select here is the list of genre values. And having done that, if I click OK, we'll see that at the moment, because I've not filtered the list yet, it's showing the first five genre names in the list, then the word etc. If I change this to show some other genre names, we can see that it shows a comma separated list of just the ones I've selected. If I do get past five genres, then it changes to say etc at the end. So there you go, some quick examples of using quick measures to potentially save time when you're writing your measures, but to also give you some ideas about what's possible. Hope you found some of that useful. Thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.